Ya. Uh, you can start now, sir. Very good afternoon to all. First of all, I thank Ministry of Earth Sciences for selecting me for the international award in the field of ocean science and technology. This award is for the entire team of INCOIS, especially modeling and observation group, as without them, I would have not gotten this award. I thank all my colleagues. I would also like to thank all PIs and scientists who were involved in building the ocean observing system from various institutes and universities. I express my gratitude to all my collaborators, both from India and abroad, from whom I am learning observation of oceanography. I thank all past and present directors of INCAIS and Secretary MOES and all past secretaries of MOES and DOD for their continued guidance and support in implementing ocean observing system in India. Finally, I thank IITM, especially uh, Dr. Kopal from MOES and Dr. Vinu from IITM and his team for facilitating this MOES webinar. With this, I will start my presentation. Were able to see that? Yes, yes, it is. Please hide the button. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. okay, so I will be talking about today ocean observation by India. Maybe it's just some brief history, present status, how it has evolved over two decades, and also some suggestion for future observational requirements or what are the existing caps and how we can fill up. So these are the basic uh, things I will cover in this talk. Uh, actually, if you all know that uh, until end of uh, 20th century, the Indian Ocean is almost underabsorbed when compared to Atlantic and Pacific. But however, with the effort of uh, both India as well as international collaborations, and I think the Indian Ocean is matured enough to have more number of observations uh, as equivalent to other oceans. So my outline of talk is basically, I will just talk about some introduction about the ocean observations, why we need, and uh, what is the importance of ocean observations. And also I will little bit touch upon what are the past history, when, from when we have started the ocean observations, how it has been evolved. And finally, I end up with the, how the present status has come. Mainly I will focus on sustained observing system. And so I will just highlight on typical applications. I cannot cover entire applications of uh, what has come out from these observations, but I will just highlight some of the observations uh, as thrown some new insights. And also what is the use of operational utility of this observational components? And finally, what are the gap area in the existing observations and how we can go ahead with that? And what are the challenges occurred? and way forward. So these are the basic things I will cover. First, why we need ocean observations? Actually, for detecting many of the oceanic uh, variables, of especially climate variable, we need to detect it for better forecasting at different time scales. So we need to observe this ocean components. And also these ocean variables also will facilitate safe and efficient marine operations in and around uh, the ocean. And also it is very important and these observation requirements are useful for the Coast Guard and Naval or maybe national security issues. And also it is also very important for a sustainable use of the marine living resources so that if you have an observation, so you know how much we are, uh, uh, resources we are, using and how much we have to 
uh, keep for sustainable utility. And also we have to have a, a marine ecosystem we have to preserve. And then also we have to mitigate the natural hazards, especially in the oceanographic hazards like a cyclone, tsunami, and associated storm surges. And finally, of course, we have to learn our strength and our education, and also we have to improve our knowledge in the ocean realm. Ocean observation consists of two major components. One is the in-situ observations. It is basically to capture changes in time and depth at specific points or tracks. And the other one is the remote sensing. It is to capture spatial information and with the temporal variations optically. Of course, we will be able to get only surface information from remote sensing, or we will have an in integrated ocean column that information we will be able to get the remote sensing. And remote sensing is consists of, the, again, two components. One is a radar, and other one is a satellite. So in this presentation, I will be mostly covering in-situ observations. In-situ observations, broadly, we can classify it into two areas. One is uh, location varies with the time. It is a Lagrangian. Actually, basically, these observations, wherever the instruments and platform we are using, the observation time as well as space will continue to change according to the uh, currents and other uh, environmental conditions. So that is called a Lagrangian observation. And the other one is a location does not vary with the time. It is a fixed point. At particular location, we get a continuous time series observation that is Eulerian observations, such as mooring or some station observations. So mainly, I will concentrate in this talk how this in-situ observations over the year period, how it is evolved, and how it is the status present, presently. See, the understanding the ocean, it is started way back very long time. And even uh, in the Vedic text, it has been in the year of uh, 3000 to 2500 BC, it is very well articulated the role of ocean in the life on the planet Earth. And also, it has been very well uh, mentioned that the symbiotic relation between ocean and atmosphere. That means that is a coupling system has been very well mentioned in the Vedic test. So we need to observe combinedly together and we have to understand together for the betterment. The observation started way back by uh, the atom, first attempt was started by the Aristotle uh, in 322 BC to understand and predict the oscillate tidal currents in this state of Eucharist. So this is the first attempt he has made. So whenever the tidal influence are going up and down or the currents are changing, how it is happening, whether it is a periodic or it is non-periodic, why it is periodic and non-periodic, he wants to understand that. So that is what first observational things which is started in way back in 322 BC. Over the two, 2000 years, we continue to try to understand with the various observation or better predict the oceans of various components like uh, various, various variables, currents, waves, tides, temperature, salinity, all these things. We are trying to continuously, we are trying to observe and understand and try to predict the future. Coming back to the Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean is unique when compared to other oceans. This is the only ocean where there is no opening in the northern subtropical regions. Thereby, the, whatever the heat came in the tropics cannot be transported to higher northern latitudes. However, the extra heats are coming from the low latitude opening in its eastern boundary through Indonesian through flow. It is also providing additional heat as well as the fresh water from the uh, Indonesian through flow. And another important uniqueness of the Indian Ocean is, the, especially in the North Indian Ocean, is the seasonal reversal of winds as well as the currents. So this is very unique in the Indian Ocean. And also the Southern, Ocean, Southern Indian Ocean, the living current of West Coast of Australia, it is uh, flowing forward when compared to other ocean, it is flowing towards equator bed. So that is very unique things. 
so there are very uniqueness in the indian ocean and there are a lot of processes are happening at different uh, time scales starting from cyclones and mjo in the equatorial indian ocean as well as the meso and then in the seasonal time scale monsoon and then interannual time scale uh, indian ocean dipole climate move it is having its own climate move in indian ocean and also it is a long term trend so as you all know that the warming trend in the indian ocean is uh, higher than any other oceans so the trend is also very quite significant in the indian ocean and because of this all process the biogeochemistry and the ecosystem also changes in the indian oceans apart from the ocean circulations though it is having uniqueness and different variations in different time scale a rich spectrum of variability in different times but it is it was poorly observed compared to other ocean until 20th century the first observations maybe in india the first observation started like uh, any other place it is a tide gauge actually the survey of india since 1987 they started measuring the sea level changes along the coast and it has been used effectively and efficiently by many global community for understanding the sea level variations entire globe as well as the indian regions and the indian ocean regions they started this observation using the float gauge a conventional float gauge in number of coastal uh, locations for example in mumbai and haldia uh, uh, and chennai some of the port we have more than 100 years of record of uh, sea level record is available and there are many other stations also uh, more than few decades of observations are available all along the indian coast after the indian ocean tsunami in 2004 incas has revitalized this tide gauge network with the conventional float gauge also with the modern uh, instrumentation like a radar and present gauge and it has started pumping this tide gauge data in real time so it has been uh, more than 30 to uh, 40 stations are continuously operating in and around the uh, indian indian coast both in both in the mainland as well as the island nations so this is the first observations we started maybe if you want to have any long term things we want to change this is the only observations we have in the india then the important things is started uh, of course until then there is indian ocean there are not much observations but international community has realized that the indian ocean doesn't have any observations so why don't we start some major experiment so that is what started in international indian ocean expeditions that is in the year 1960s after the international geophysical year they has planned that IIOE is important and we have to start that so that's why this IIOE started this experiment started in 59 and it was almost 6 five to 6 years it is continued this various observations under the umbrella of scientific committee on ocean research and international council of science large scale multinational hydrographic survey of the indian oceans was obtained during that uh, IIOE experiment about 45 research vessels uh, including four indian from 14 countries have participated including 200 participants from india from both national institutions as well as the universities during this iiwe experiment there are physical chemical biological oceanography fisheries marine meteorology marine geophysics and geology all this uh, component various discipline this observation has been conducted the culmination of iioe also led to the birth of nio at goa the first dedicated institute of oceanographic research so after this iioe there are the institute started and the nio and other institutions they have started numerous experiment and expeditions over the uh, nearby india as well as indian oceans they have mainly targeted with the ship and boat crew observations and expeditions for specific objectives 
to understand the ocean phenomena. However, in the year 1990s, the DOD and NIOT, NIO has initiated three major program. It is one is the drifting by program and another one is XPT and this current metal mooring. So these three important automatic uh, instruments, maybe so-called that time modern instruments, they have been deployed in the ocean to observe the trip, uh, various parameters. The drifting voice has come because one of the important component of this air pressure, even though we have in all over India, we have so many automatic weather station provide the air pressure information, but in the ocean, not even single air pressure measurement is available. So considering that importance of air pressure, as well as to validate satellite data, especially polar orbiting, AVHRR and other satellite to validate the SST, these are the two prime components they have. The two sensors have been incorporated with drifting boy. So once you deploy, it will provide one year or so continuous measurement of atmospheric pressure and SST over wherever it moves. It is a Lagrangian type of observations. Along with that, whenever it moves, it is also provide the mixed layer currents because it uh, drifters, it is having 15 meter or five meter drop. So we will be able to get the mixed layer currents indirectly using the satellite fix. The XPT program is a, a very uh, trust kind, trust of its kind to measure the upper ocean thermal structure along the major shipping route. So wherever the major shipping route, uh, Mumbai to Mauritius, or Chennai to Port Player, Chennai to Singapore, or uh, Calcutta to Port Player, and Kavariti. So this major shipping route, some of the technical uh, person will go there and try to uh, deploy this XPT. Uh, this XPT will provide temperature up to 760 meters or so, and you will get at least the section from the ship route, you will get the thermal structure up to 700 to 800 meter depth. Then the current meters, the importance of equatorial uh, forcing and also try to understand the equatorial subsurface currents and MO has deployed a uh, few of the moorings and these moorings will measure the currents as well as the temperature and salinity up to full water column, 4,000 meter or so it is being measured. So this is the first of its kind it has been provided the uh, in-situ observations of uh, uh, what is called automatic uh, system for sustained observation purpose. And also in the coastal uh, ocean monitoring and prediction system, COMAX, the earlier ICMAM and now NCCR has started observing the coastal area mainly to assess the coastal environmental condition, how it is changing over the period and how in the long term, how it is changing so that they advise the government or any public institutions, how the health of the ocean is changing over the time. These observations, they started from 1992 and they started about more than 25 environmental variables over 80 locations with the help of 11 R&D institutions. They have started collecting these observations. They mainly use the two of the coastal research vessels uh, Sagar Puri and Pasmi from 1996 and afterwards of course now there are new vessels have been replaced to this uh, Sagar Puri and Pasmi so that now uh, NIOT has uh, started new vessels Sagar Tara and Anvisika for the coastal monitoring so these observations are continuing for the understanding the health of the ocean. Then in the 1997 uh, DOD has started uh, this program in NIOT, basically under the NORAD collaboration, NORAD 8, they started deploying uh, first time the data boy, 12 data boys in the North Indian oceans. And it is basically AWS in the ocean. So this uh, data boy has provided a very wealth of data, basically collects real time, time series observation of marine meteorology, and upper ocean. It, this observation is able to resolve right from the diurnal scale up to intraseasonal, seasonal, and further uh, time scales. We are able to resolve different things. 
And initially, they started with the marine meteorology and some of the uh, mooring, it is having a wave spectrum and some mooring it was having with the thermistor testing. That means up to 120 meter, there will be a temperature uh, measurement with the various depth. In some, a few of the deep ocean measurement is having thermistor testing. So this was the initial stage, but now it has been evolved in such a way, it has been uh, internationally well recognized to program and it, they are able to measure uh, uh, entire uh, radiation. Earlier it was not, no radiation was there. Now they have radiation they have incorporated and as well as the subsurface information to 500 meter of various temperature, salinity, and some of the bio geochemical sensors have been incorporated in this data boy and it provides very wealth of data from 1997. And also this uh, program has uh, uh, evolved, maybe it has been used for specialized uh, technology for deployment of uh, call wall site as well as similar kind of boy deployed in the Indark, the Arctic, Arctic Ocean and many other places this has been uh, deployed and used for uh, this technology. Of course, this has a very major impact. It has come uh, after 1997. I remember as soon as we deployed this uh, first uh, set of boys in 1997 and 1998, first time we received a uh, Gujarat cyclone, there we are able to see how the pressure dropping, how the wind speed is increasing. And right across the uh, boy, this uh, cyclone has moved and we are able to see how much temperature drop and other things. And there are much more uh, information has been brought out by this mooring. Many new insight has been come, both in diurnal as well as interstitial time scales. It has been thrown new. A uh, lot of publication has come from this. Also, this has been used for operational purposes, like, uh, like a cyclone, as well as assimilation of ocean, uh, parameters in ocean model as, uh, and also uh, the marine meteorological parameters in the atmospheric model they assimilate and try to go for uh, various uh, time scale forecast and predictions. So it has been uh, revolutionized uh, Indian uh, observation system after this uh, data by program established in 1987. Then there are many field campaigns in between the 1990s. There are many field campaigns have been uh, uh, conducted by the uh, collaboration with the international community as well as India alone. The first one, of course, the 1979, the Monax experiment started mainly in the summertime um, as well as the winter time. Separately, Monax experiment started. So there are many ships were operating both Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. It has provided very, very valuable information about the subsurface, surface, as well as the marine boundary layer observations. It has uh, provided wealth of data during this bonus experiment. Afterwards, they have, uh, I think uh, in during 1994 to 97, the joint global ocean flux study, they have also, it is also international collaboration. They have conducted the experiment in the Arabian Sea for the process studies to understand the processes controlling the uh, carbon cycle in the ocean as well as its exchanges with the uh, atmospheres. And it is about 20 countries have participated, including India. So in that time, we are trying to learn, learn from the many observational capability from uh, international community. And also Indo-X, also uh, started in 1997 to 99, and it is a basically a cooperative program involving scientists from many countries, and India also partner to that. And this international group, over 150 scientists, uh, is participated in this field experiment to study how air pollution affects climate process over the tropical Indian Ocean. Then, under the uh, ICRP, that means Indian Climate Research Program. Two independent uh, Indian alone, we have conducted the experiment on one in Bob Max, basically in the Bay of Bengal, and another one is R Max in the Arabian Sea. The Bob Max is a standalone. India alone has conducted such type of expedition first time, 
and the first observational experiment campaign uh, in the bay of bengal and it is uh, having a measurement of uh, many variables both from atmosphere ocean and their uh, interchange whatever the interface to gain deeper insight and then many radius on balloon and launched and also subsurface information has been gathered to understand the uh, monsoon uh, process in that uh, bob max essentially there are two ships was there one in the north one in the south uh, sagar kanya and sagar twan he was uh, uh, operating this uh, both ships and uh, there are about 80 scientists from 15 organization have participated in this bob max program later on the similar side in uh, arabian sea side the land ocean atmosphere field experiments under icrp they have conducted and the offshore trough embedded mesoscale vortices and the intense rainfall on west coast of india has been studied and also they want to study the warm pool signatures especially evolution and maintenance and collapse of the indian warm pool and the hands of face of the monsoon how it is evolved so these are the various field campaigns also in between started and that is also uh, uh, provided a lot of uh, data in the ocean side ocean observation side then it has come uh, in 2001 uh, uh, argo profiling probes has come and this is a uh, similar to uh, atmospheric uh, uh, radio sonar this is a oceanographic radio sonar it measures the temperature and salinity up to 2000 meter in real time once in 10 days and this has been totally revolutionized because uh, this observations uh, the fundamental tenant of argo is basically free availability data within 24 hours so that is why everybody got this data and look at the data and it has been used by effectively many people initially it started with the temperature and salinity uh, up to 2000 meter and later on many bio argo and many other uh, sensor has been added in this argo floats and they are able to provide bio geochemical variables in some of the locations and also uh, some of the uh, argo floats has been designed in such a way to make a high resolution both in terms of vertical resolution so higher as well as the temporal resolution has been increased normally it is say uh, 10 days but most of the bay of bengal floats it is 5 days in order to capture the interstitial variability in the bay of bengal and of course this also has uh, thrown many new insights and it has come uh, more than 220 publications only i am talking about only in indian author of the first other from the argo floats and of course uh, it uh, it varies from cyclone to all time scales and also it has been effectively used for assimilation in ocean model for the ocean analysis essentially this argo float is meant for seasonal to decadal climate variability but however the amount of data it has been given in a different resolution and other things it has been used for right from the cyclone and interstitial time scale and all time scale it has been effectively used then during that the same time and uh, international collaboration of course india was instrumental in forming the indian ocean goose uh, in 2001 or 2 and uh, i think 2001 and uh, the first conference was organized in mauritius and uh, india was leading that uh, conference and that uh, indian ocean goose uh, establishment the first time india has deployed 12 argo floats right from chennai to mauritius on the way and the, all the participants have attended uh, this uh, iwo goose uh, first meeting by the crews they have those all participants have uh, attended the meeting and also finally at the end of this iwo goose meeting they have planned for indian ocean is very well under observed so we need a design and we need to have some integrated observing system so it was planned that one under the umbrella of uh, iwo goose and glaiwar and they have established the indian ocean panel in 2004 and that panel has designed the system what we need in indian ocean what are the important sustained observation we require and where we need this observations all these things are planned 
and accordingly the five important platforms like argo and nuring xpt drifters and tidecage these five components where we need to have observations and where uh, and what uh, parameters and other things it has been designed and also it is uh, uh, what is called it is basically it is a multinational and multi institutional and multi platform observing capability also this observations uh, uh, this indus that is called indian ocean observing system under this system uh, complement to satellite observations there are many other process study also envisaged and like the cindy dynamo and other process studies also has been conducted in the equatorial indian oceans so this is a 2004 is a start of this building this uh, uh, what is called indus and it has been slowly has been uh, what is called strengthened apart from this sustained open ocean observations there are many coastal observations from african coast as well as indian coast Uh, arabian sea bay of bengal and there are many other indonesian through flow regions many other observation also planned by the national uh, group of course this once the design was available then people started looking at it uh, where is the resources of course india has come forward to provide some resources like other countries and that is a very big uh, what is called uh, achievement or maybe the contribution from india it has been able to build this indian ocean uh, observing system the argo floats basically it is planned for one float in the indian ocean uh, one float in every 3 by 3 degree box whereas the drifter one drifter per 5 degree box and xpts are this lines whatever mentioned there are major shipping route and all along the shipping route it was planned for making the upper ocean measurement and also all along the coast the tide gauge measurement also planned the one of the important component of this uh, uh, indus is the mooring actually rama mooring and this rama mooring of course it has been uh, initially started with uh, uh, japan they have started with the triton mooring few of the triton mooring in the eastern side of the indian ocean and later on uh, us as well as india Uh, started building many of the uh, mooring. Uh, this is basically basin scale observing system, and upper ocean up to 500 meter has been uh, monitored with the various temperature and salinity structure, and it covers almost all the regions of the uh, Indian Ocean. And uh, some of the uh, you can see that some of the uh, dots are uh, all the blue dots are contribution from US as well as India. i mean india means the major ship time roughly about 60 to 75 days of ship time as provided by india that is why we are able to deploy many of the mooring and every year we need to service this mooring the some of the dots are uh, blank this is not been established yet but this arabian sea moorings that has been placed in i think last one or two years ago these are in operational so there are about 46 mooring was planned initially and later on maybe in the rama 2 version maybe the last year it has been redesigned to have 42 mooring and that is all most of the boys are in place these observations each dot some of the things are square it is having a flux measurement as well as a biogeochemical measurements and some of the things are this is will have a, a, a marine meteorology as well as the upper ocean Uh, 500 meter temperature and salinity. Some of the things are equatorial mooring. That is the Indian contribution from the equatorial mooring. It was continued at three major locations, and there are many other uh, moorings which has been contributed from ship time from Indonesia and Africa as well as Australia and China and Japan. So all these countries have contributed, and there is a uh, IR of that is the Indus Resource Forum. and that forum has uh, uh, coordinated and committed their funding from various countries to build this uh, array and sustain this array then later on in 2008 uh, uh, or 9 or so the adcp mooring along the indian coast uh, it is basically long term mooring to understand the intra seasonal seasonal internal variability 
both on the self as well as of the self um, to try to understand entire coast. Actually, this is initiative by NIO and uh, supported by the Ministry of Earth Sciences through INCAIS to continuously monitor the coastal currents. Of course, there are about 19 or maybe the 10 pairs of uh, moorings have been deployed along the Indian coast. And it has been uh, what is called more than uh, one decade observations are available. And it has uh, very uh, effectively used, and uh, it is a vital, uh, this data was, uh, what is called, effectively used for many of the validation of the ocean model and try to improve the model and also we understand the process in the coastal. And after tsunami in uh, 2004, as I mentioned already, the tide cage was uh, strengthened uh, in the same survey of India, well as well as nearby with the modern uh, technology. They installed uh, 36 tide cages is installed. Apart from that, the tsunami boy <laughs> basically to uh, uh, measure the uh, pressure at the sea bottom whenever there is a um, um, sea level uh, sorry the bottom uh, changes the or the water level changes due to earthquake or anything so the small amount of changes in the water level has been monitored by this uh, pressure sensor ppr bottom pressure sensor and also it is having the temperature sensor and both the things it is transmitted acoustically to the uh, surface boy the data boy and then from there it uh, communicate to the satellite and it passed to the show stations. So we have about a few, um, I think around uh, six in the Bay of Bengal and two in the Arabian Sea it has been deployed. So this will provide a clue uh, at least uh, a few hours before uh, the arrival of the uh, tsunami or uh, any other uh, things, especially tsunami things. Then, Along with that, of course, it is started under the umbrella of uh, tsunami network, though it is not uh, used for tsunami, but under this uh, same time, it has been established by NIOT, five pairs of uh, HF radar network. And this five HF radar, it provides the uh, ocean currents up to 100 kilometers depending upon the weather, ocean weather. It has been deployed about uh, five sets and it enables the measurements of continuously you will get the wave and current information uh, along the coast. Uh, so it has to be to be vital if we have uh, com complete maybe another maybe five, six pairs if we install and we will have entire coast, we can provide the now cost of ocean currents. That is what uh, many other countries are doing. So and the coastal currents are very difficult to model as uh, there are complex process. So we can use for a now cost so that uh, many of the fishermen or the coastal population will be much benefited during, uh, for this now cost forecast. So we can think of enhancing this uh, HF radar network in the uh, Indian coast, also the uh, including the islands. Also in the same time, they started a very innovative program of under the SATCO by INCOIS. They started coastal time series station. Basically, at the same time, the many of the universities, they use the conventional boat and they go up to case one and case two waters, different depth, and they try to make a water sample at the same time, as well as uh, radiometric measurements. All these things is collected exactly at the same time, the satellite pass over, uh, especially ocean satellite, 12 noon, uh, same time they acquire and they have collected large amount of data. It is basically the effort of uh, INCAIS as well as the um, universities to work together. And they collect a lot of data for validation of uh, uh, satellite of case one and case two waters. And this actually is a very innovative program. I would, uh, I personally feel that this has to be expanded much more. We can use the universities of coastal universities and coastal institute, and they can take at a predetermined time same time they can go and take observation, not only water sample, all the ocean variables, including um, water quality and uh, other health of the ocean also can be monitored. It will eventually it will provide very, very useful information uh, to the country. And then the next uh, five-year plan, it is also started 
uh, wave radar buoy. Actually, this is to monitor the uh, wave spectrum all along the coast, uh, by uh, all along the coast. At least it's unique observations and it will give the entire spectrum. And now it is, we know that uh, more than a decade of time, uh, we have a continuous observation in any of the locations. We have a wave uh, spectrum available. So we know how Indian uh, coast, the wave characteristics are changes and other things from this wave border network. Also, uh, in case I started the real-time automatic weather station network in the ship, basically there are many, uh, apart from research vessels, there are many fisheries vessels, coast guard vessels, and many um, offshore uh, ONGC and other platform uh, vessels are uh, moving around India, especially in the coast as well as far away. So just installing this AWS, it will provide the, uh, the marine meteorological variables then and there so that we will be able to make use of this uh, AWS data for both uh, assimilation in the atmospheric model as well as to know at that time, uh, at that location, what is the weather variation is happening. Then also it is a Southern Ocean expedition. Of course, uh, from NCPOR, they have conducted a Southern Ocean expedition from almost most of the time in Mauritius to Antarctica. And uh, so far they have conducted uh, 11 such expeditions. The main focus is to understand the role and response of Southern Ocean to regional as well as the climate global climate variability. So the two of the important science questions uh, they want to address so that they have continuously uh, uh, monitor from the uh, various uh, uh, places from Mauritius to Antarctica, especially water sample, sediment cores, and um, there are marine meteorology, the uh, boundary layer from the radio sonde and aerosol measurements. So there are many measurements, uh, chemical, physical, and biological, all measurements have been uh, obtained over the uh, Southern Ocean. Of course, the, and this particular observation has been conducted only during Southern summer, but we don't have much observation in the, uh, what is called, in other uh, season. So maybe we have to think about uh, Southern Ocean also, we need to have a sustained observation like uh, Indian Ocean. Then once this sustained observation has been established, the large scale observation components are in place, then it has been uh, demand. So there was a thought in the monsoon mission, there was a, a biases in the model, especially the uh, ocean model was able to simulate the uh, temperature, especially SST and the mixed layer depth it is, was underestimated. So in order to improve the ocean model as well as the uh, atmospheric forcing parameters, how do we improve that one? For that, the demand has come is uh, what is called fine scale observations and uh, Indo-US collaboration. That means a uh, air sea interaction research initiative and uh, ocean mixing and monsoon collaboration. Under the monsoon mission, uh, it has been uh, put forth the objective to obtain the multi-scale observation in the near surface Bay of Bengal to focus on sub scale process. So this is the first time we are able to see that how the sub uh, scale process is happening in the Bay of Bengal. And these data sets are used for parameterize the upper ocean process in the ocean model for realistic simulation of basin school SST. And also it has been given uh, a very good opportunity for uh, India to, especially Indian colleagues to understand the fine scale observations and the new tools, uh, what are the available for ocean observations starting from underway CTD. It will provide the, without stopping the vessel, you will get the temperature and salinity information and you will be able to characterize the uh, spatial variability of temperature and salinity using this uh, UCTD. And also they have deployed uh, uh, some of the uh, Lacrangian float. It will provide not only temperature and salinity, it is also provide the currents all along the surface and it trips along the particular density surface. So you will get a very valuable information along the density surface. And also a few of the gliders have been deployed and in the Bay of Bengal and try to 
operate as a fixed location as well as to go from one place to another place to uh, get the section how it is. So unlike Argo floats, this you can program in such a way that in spatial uh, area also you can cover at certain extent. And also microstructure has been used uh, for uh, especially to the diffusivity component to measure and some of the moving also it has been uh, incorporated the uh, what is a kaipad and other things to mon uh, monitor the ocean turbidity or ocean diffusive uh, uh, turbulent heat fluxes to monitor and this sub uh, sub uh, mesoscale scale observation has pro provided a lot of new information which we are not aware in earlier um, and it has provided many publications as well as still a lot of data are available which we need to still probe for the uh, better understanding. And similar to that, uh, in the Southern Ocean also, I think in the Bay of Bengal boundary layer experiment, bubble experiment was started in 2016. It is also a field experiment using uh, Sindhu Sadhana to collect high quality in situ data sets. And this is a basically a collaboration with the India and uh, uh, UK. And this is also uh, physical, biological, and chemical parameters were measured at a particular section 8 north. And here also it has been used to effectively the UCTD, and there are some uh, Argo floats and drifters and gliders were operated. And also the AD covariant system also has been uh, placed in the onboard ship and it has been measured. So these observations provide a, a multi platform observation of features of uh, Southern Bay and captured a pre conditioning phase of the summer monsoon. And then later on in the last year, of course, it is also under the monsoon mission. It has planned uh, in 2015, but it has been materialized in 2019. The flux moving has been uh, deployed with the help of, uh, in collaboration with the Woods Hole. So this is the first of its kind in the Indian Ocean to measure the direct flux measurement, uh, that uh, directly measure the latent and sensible heat flux and wind stress over the uh, ocean in the, for the continuous year. Still, this boils in the water, and it is, I think, uh, in case I uh, will soon cover this boil. So, this direct flux estimate can be used to verify the uh, bulk formulae, what we are using for the forcing for the atmospheric uh, uh, forcing parameter for the ocean, whether it is in, uh, the atmospheric uh, fluxes, how good uh, in the model, as well as uh, what we are observing through conventional method. <coughs> <clears throat> of course, this is having this moving as a surface meteorology and radiation, direct turbulent fluxes, and also temperature, salinity, currents at a very fine vertical resolution uh, up to 500 meters or so. It will provide a very, in, uh, very comprehensive data set at that location, our full set of all the parameters. So these are the different platforms we are able to use in the last uh, two three decades, right? from uh, tide cage uh, up to glider, uh, we are able to use and most of the technology by uh, various institutions are using for the sustained observations. And apart from that, uh, we have a, a fleet of research vessels, Sagar Kanya, Sagar Nidhi and Sagar Sampada. They are continuously measuring various uh, parameters and helping for any other experiments. So we are able to use uh, so many instruments and uh, so many uh, technologies for the uh, Indian Ocean observing system. Presently, these are the status of in-situ observing system in the Indian Ocean. If you see that in the two, three decades before, we don't have no dots in the Indian Ocean. Now there are many dots in the Indian Ocean and also uh, India also sufficiently contributed to building this uh, array, especially uh, Argo floats, as well as the uh, drifting boys and um, uh, Rama boy in supporting ship time and HF radar, ADCP, and there are tide cages. All these uh, things has been uh, supported by uh, India. So now we can blindly or we can boldly we can say that Indian Ocean is not under observed. It is as equivalent to other. Uh, ocean like Atlantic and Pacific. 
of course in the north indian ocean some of the argo and other observation is much more than anywhere in the uh, ocean basin so coming back to so we have observations and uh, this observation has provided uh, some of the uh, research component as well as the operational applications so these observation platforms of uh, various uh, platforms has provided uh, at uh, various uh, uh, scales right from the cyclo intrasystemal interannual and much more uh, scale it has provided vital informations and also it has provided um, main ingredients for the simulation in the ocean as well as in the atmospheric model for the seasonal forecast of uh, many variables i cannot comprehend all the uh, things what has been brought out by this ocean observations just i want to highlight some of the important things what it has been brought out this uh, two decades of observations so first time we are able to see the response of uh, ocean response of uh, response due to cyclone especially the ocean heat content and the stratification and <coughs> how the currents and temperature and salinity changes during cyclone for example bay of bengal the sst drop is very less when compared to arabian sea and there are uh, problems associated with the stratifications so there are at least from indian side there are about more than hundreds of papers have come out uh, using this uh, mood boy as well as the argo floats and some of the drifting boy observations and also the uniqueness of the mooring is a uh, to resolve the interstitial variability right from the sst barrier layer mixed layer uh, isothermal layer and oxygen chlorophyll and thermocline all this variability how it is happened in different time in the bay of bengal and arabian sea as well as in the equatorial indian ocean we are able to study and document the uh, things what is happening and also role of uh, thermal inversion in mixed layer heat budget <clears throat> and also the subsurface tabular heat fluxes which is normally we don't measure so if we measure it and how important this uh, turbulent heat flux we can see that uh, some of the observation from the mooring micro character has been uh, incorporated that has given lot of clue on turbulent heat flux uh, uh, importance it also subseasonal response to temperature and salinity to surface heat and freshwater flux and then sub mesa scale variability especially temperature and salinity trends uh, we have a, a what is called kilometer scale variability and we need to uh, resolve that means we should have a much finer observations and uh, other platforms also it has given a lot of information about the internal variability of uh, temperature salinity in mixed layer in equatorial indian ocean as well as the uh, bay of bengal and arabian sea in some year especially during la nina time you will get more cyclone in the bay of bengal especially in the post monsoon cyclone more means i mean it is intense cyclone whereas if there is el nino you will have more productivity in the bay of bengal so if you have productivity of el nino sorry productivity of cyclone or productivity of uh, primary productivity depends on the equatorial dynamics in the bay of bengal we can very well document it and also in the long term trend sea level basically the contribution from thermospheric in the indian ocean how the how much this thermospheric uh, sea level is contributed to total sea level uh, during last two decades also it has been documented using argo floats and these observations are used effectively for validation of satellite uh, uh, data derived data of uh, many variables and also it is used to uh, what is called see the what is the biases in the model and other parameters and also the argo floats and other things have given new insight about the recent uh, southern ocean warming trends as well as uh, some of the uh, <coughs> southern ocean polynia has happened in the near antarctic waters and other things so there are many of course uh, uh, i'm not able to synthesize all the outcome whatever has come out from the ocean observations but it has given tremendous amount of new insights in the north indian ocean or indian ocean using these observations 
apart from understanding it is also used for assimilation especially the argo xpt and mooring all this data are being assimilated in the ocean model and from that we are able to provide the accurate estimate of the ocean state and which is used to initialize the couple model for seasonal forecast of uh, monsoon as well as to understand the variability of ocean in different time scales of course this is initiated at the uh, incas in uh, 2006 7 and maybe finally now it is uh, continue to improve this uh, ocean analysis both at iitm as well as at uh, incas of course we need to improve the model physics especially in, uh, the mixing parameters scheme and other things which we need to improve for the better uh, simulation or estimation of the ocean analysis. So having said that, we, yes, we have a sustained observation. It has provided a lot of valuable data and it has been used both for understanding as well as the assimilation for the operational utility. But however, there are some gap exist in the existing observing system. So I've just listed some of the gaps. One is still we have to uh, we have failed to measure the boundary currents along the coast. Many of the boundary currents we are not able to measure fully. So we need to <coughs> we need to augment these type of observations, maybe using high density XPT, or we can operate with the glider all along the coast and we can resolve this boundary currents. And another one is uh, only half of the ocean volume is covered by Argo, maybe up to 2000 meter, but the remaining half of the ocean volume is below that, which we have not measured. So we need to measure this uh, area also, maybe mainly the deep ocean below 2000 meter. Maybe we can think of a deep Argo to go and observe for uh, below 2000 meter depth up to ocean bottom, maybe 4000 or 5000 meter depth, we can uh, observe that variables, especially temperature and salinity. And also one of the important, though the Rama array as well as Indian mooring, Omni and other things are there. One of the important reason, uh, important uh, things, a uh, region where we are missing still the Western Equatorial Indian Ocean. The Western Equatorial Indian Ocean is very important in terms of many aspects, both in the Ikino or you can make a Indian, or Western box of the Indian Ocean type or the uh, maybe the uh, MJO initiation region. All these regions are very, uh, the Western uh, Equatorial Indian Ocean, very important, but we have a large gap there, which we need to uh, fill up soon. And also the coastal and deep ocean biogeochemistry. Though some of the uh, biogeochemistry is measured from the uh, bio -argo and other things, I think we have to enhance this biogeochemical observations both in, uh, in coastal regions, as well as in the Argo and mooring and glider section, we need to augment this type of measurements. Also in the Southern Ocean, we are observing only in the summer time with uh, ship, uh, ship observations. I think we need to go for like uh, automated observations, maybe in the mooring or a glider for a sustained observation in Southern Ocean, at least in the Indian, sec Indian Ocean sector of the Southern Ocean, we can plan for the, uh, the long-term measurements. Also, as I mentioned, this Kachaf radar along the coast, I think if we are able to complete another five sets, we will be able to now cast entire coast, the now cast information of currents and waves. So it will be very useful. <coughs> another important thing is, is though we have covered ocean and deep ocean very well, but uh, in the ocean side, the boundary layer, the, uh, the atmospheric boundary layer, we are not able to measure. Maybe we have to think of uh, like what is available in the radio sonde in the uh, mainland. We should think something in the ocean side also because the marine boundary layer also very important for understanding monsoon uh, dynamics and many other uh, things. Maybe we can think of some of the UAV or some drone technology to replace the conventional balloon or radio sonde both in the mainland as well as in the ocean side. So this is a, one of the things which we need to develop the technology. I think we can think up some of the new ideas to how do we measure this uh, 
marine boundary layer over the ocean. And also we need to continue the fine scale observation for uh, improving the uh, mixed layer parameterization scheme, uh, especially microstructure and kypod in the mooring. These are all things which we need to frequently measure and more and more. Of course, these are institute observation system and also to complement the same, we should have a simultaneous measurement of SST and winds from satellites, like uh, maybe in the microwave, uh, things like uh, maybe like a trim SST, a TMI trim SST and a scatter meter combined it together if we launch, it will be very useful for uh, covering entire uh, global ocean. So these are my uh, challenges, what I'm thinking, these are the, some challenges ahead and way forward. One is we need to sustain the present ocean observing system, the existing either Indus or Omni or Argo floats or many platforms we need to sustain while improving its coverage as well as data quality. And also we need to have a simplified data access to the uh, people. Uh, they have to access the data, very easy way to access. Now they are able to access, but still we have to see better ways to uh, provide the data to the users, especially university and institutions. And also we can think of extension of sampling domain and uh, high latitude, higher latitude, also higher resolution and boundary currents. And as I mentioned, deep ocean observations, maybe we can think of deep Argo or a deep mooring or AUV and other things and fine scale observations and also multidisciplinary observation, uh, both the biogeochemistry as well as marine boundary layer, maybe up to one or few kilometer whether we can use with the drone, some of the marine boundary layer observations, we can think of it. So, and also we need to better utilize the research vessels as well as the commercial vessels like uh, what uh, AWS has incorporated. Similar way we need to use more and more these vessels for uh, observation or uh, at least the ocean surface layer and the air sea exchange. We need to uh, utilize more and more these research vessels. And of course, the effective utilization of data for products and services, we have to make it. And finally, the satellite, microwave satellite sensors to monitor SST and wind, similar to GMI and trim and ocean sand. It will be helpful for the some of the gap areas to fulfill. With this, I uh, end with my presentation. Thank you for, for attending and listening this talk. Thank you, Dr. Devachandran. That was a very comprehensive uh, talk about ocean observations in the Indian Ocean. And uh, we do have some questions from the audience and I have posted it to your chat window. So kindly read and answer. Okay. Okay. The first question is in the National Data Bio Program 1987, temperature up to what depth was measured initially and what is the current scenario? How many boys have been deployed till date? <coughs> okay. In the 1997, uh, I think uh, there are about four to five deep ocean data boys. That means outside is uh, some of the boys have been deployed with the temperature sting. Of course, it is up to uh, 120 meter depth. It has been measured only temperature using thermistor sting uh, cable, through cable, and uh, it was measured. And as of now, uh, I think almost all the boys, Amuni or Rama, all the boys are measuring up to 500 meter at various depth. Uh, I think uh, if you see that in Bay Bengal, at least uh, uh, six plus three, about uh, 10 boys will be providing the temperature and salinity data up to 500 meter depth. And similarly in the Arabian Sea and the equatorial, all the Rama boy location, whatever I have shown, as well as Omni boy locations, whatever I have shown earlier also, all these boys have the uh, temperature and salinities sensor up to 500 meter depth. The second question is whether any target sensitivity experiment are performed to optimize the application of Indian Ocean observations. How are ocean observation sites selected? Actually, as I mentioned in the 2004, this op, uh, optimum observation uh, system is designed by the uh, ocean model 
of course, OSSC, this uh, observing system simulation experiment, it has been performed both at the uh, GFDL as well as in Australia. So they have uh, brought out where the variabilities are, uh, high frequency variabilities are where it is observed from the model and where it is required to be monitored and that type of sensitivity experiment has been conducted by two of the modeling uh, team. From that, based on that, it has been placed uh, this 46 mooring dot as well as the three by three degree array of uh, Argo floats and five by five degree array of uh, drifting boys and other things. So basically it is a modeling experiment has provided that clue. Our NIOT boys data uh, sorry, the next question is, are NIOT boys data over Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea being assimilated in Inkais Goda's assimilation system? If not, is there any plan for it? I think it is, uh, see, all the Inkais uh, uh, mooring as well as the NIOT boy data, subsurface information are assimilated into Inkais Goda's as well as the marine meteorological variables are assimilated by NCMRWF in the atmospheric model. It has been assimilated already. It is going on uh, not only uh, NIOT boy as well as the Rama mooring is assimilated. Regarding uh, um, INCA's uh, uh, AWS, uh, real-time AWS, marine meteorology program, what are the parameters collected and how long, how far long the data is available? I think I, uh, I remember it is about from 2010 or 9, from that year onwards, it is available. And the parameters is similar to whatever the marine meteorological variable measured by the mooring as well as uh, uh, any other thing. Basically, air temperature and um, uh, radiation incoming and outgoing radiation and uh, uh, wind, humidity, and all the marine meteorological parameters are measured from this uh, uh, integrated uh, uh, real-time automatic weather station. Uh, sorry. Have India considered to establish an ocean observing super site with the multi-sensor with the multi-sensor and parameters data acquisition? Actually, if you see that India has established, there are many, of course, now the Bay of Bengal in the Northern Bay, uh, the uh, Inca is in collaboration with the school, whatever the boy is deployed under, under monsoon mission, it is almost, it is a super site. There you will get uh, uh, accurate fluxes as well as the subsurface information. And also nearby, there are many other observation mooring, uh, in, uh, omni mooring, and there are many other observation mooring is available. So that is almost, uh, uh, you can have a uh, super site according to me. Maybe it is not specifically planned, but it is uh, over the time it has been evolved in the Northern Bay of Bengal because of the freshwater influx as well as the many uh, initiation of the low process system and other things. And the Northern Bay of Bengal is very complex. So that is a place uh, just outside EZ it has been placed. That is a site. Maybe most of the data always you will have in that location. Okay, Dr. Devi Chandran, uh, thank you very much for answering the questions and thank you for your valuable time to spend with us in the MOES webinar series. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. We can go offline now. Thank you. Thank you.